there, this is Linda and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm putting together my project life spread for the week of September 23rd through September 29th, 2024. And I'm working with the September Stories by the Month from Ali Edwards. Let's dive in. Okay, so for this week, I printed out my photos. I don't really have anything that like big that happened in photos or really in general. The biggest thing was we put up the new shelves in the reading room, which are right there. And I have quite a few pumpkin photos. Um, I got my shelves kind of organized in my craft room. I have this little, this photo of pumpkin. And then I, I put up a lot of fall decor. So I took and so rather than printing all those photos separate, I put them on a grid as two by two photos on a four by six spot to go into one of the four by six pockets. And then I also printed this photo. My daughter texted me of her and her roommate with their stuffed animals. And then for this week, I'm working with the uh, Stories by the Month kit for September. This is the week of September 23rd through 29th, so towards the end of the month. So the first step I'm gonna do here after laying out my photos is really just try to figure out what cards I want to include. So every month this year, there's been like a title card like this. So typically I put my title card on the left side, but because this spread is a three by fours only, and I really wanna use this one, I'm going to just put it on the right and that's, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. This one would also make a great title card, so I would probably use that in another Project Life spread. And I have this one here for my ephemera card. I have all my collected ephemera in here, so I'm super excited about that one. And then let's see, these are all four by six, so I don't need any more four by six. And this is like a first day of school photo, which I don't really, although I did have a first day of school photo for my daughter, it was kind of silly and I already documented that week. Um, this one would be cute. I could crop it to a three by four. So I'm going to keep that in mind as a possibility. Go through the vellum pieces here. And this one's super fun to do like days of the week, but I feel like I need to kind of plan that one in advance. Um, I don't have photos per day, so I'm not going to use that here. Let's go through the three by four cards. I'm gonna go through the cards first. So I have, there's definitely some back to school one, which just isn't very relevant for me at this stage in life. Um, this one's very cute. So because my title card's gonna go over here, I don't need a title card in the corner up there. Um, I have been using these, so I'll probably use that one. Actually, I might use this one up here even though it's not my title card, I can highlight the dates and I'll just have it kind of on two cards this week. This one I'm saving because I've been using those at the end. And then let's see, maybe put this one in the middle. And then for here, I need kind of like that one as a filler card. And then here's like a nice pattern to go behind this photo of my daughter and her friend. Don't really have a quote or anything, but let's see, like this one could be cute right here. So these ones that are vellum, I think I'm just gonna end up backing them with some white cardstock. I could also use like this one and bring in some of the die cut pieces. So I'm gonna look at that before I actually commit to which card I'm gonna do here. But I'm gonna move, go ahead and put these ones back as the ones I'm not gonna use. And I'm not gonna use this one either, I don't think. So I'm looking through my stories and I don't have a ton of stories this week. I think I'm gonna journal here about the progress in the reading room. And then I think I'm just gonna do bullet points there and maybe do some like little stories on top of photos, but that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, there wasn't a ton that was going on this week. So I do have a lot of ephemera. So I'm gonna just put all of this out of here for a second. That's also ephemera. So we've got these chipboards this month were um, circles. 
This one actually might be good for like on the photo of pumpkin there because um, this is kind of the transitioning towards fall is what we're doing right here. And this didn't, these don't punch out anymore with the backers, but I'm just gonna tear it. Um, and the transition to colder weather is not always ideal, but transitioning to putting the fireplace on, he's a fan. So that would work well for that spot. Um, otherwise I feel like these are mostly too big for what I'm going for here. And then let's look through the die cut pieces. So again, there's these ones that have like the days of the week. These would be super cute if you planned in advance and did a spread with them, which I probably will do something like that in the future. Um, it doesn't have the month on it, so it doesn't have to be in September. These ones are September stories. These have been done a couple of months this year and it, earlier I plan to do these like in a separate pocket page. So maybe I'll do that, not in Project Life. Um, let's see here. These little circles are kind of cute for just embellishments. So we have some numbers here. This is the date. That might be good to put like on top of here just to use it because it's dated and I really like to use the dated products. It's another day of the week. So, and there's two types of data. There's dated like this is September, but this does not have to be 2024. I can save this and use this next year. So I'm totally fine saving that for another September or in my other album. But if I don't get to it, that's okay. This one has 2024 on it. So it'd be better to use it now. This is also a good one for some additional journaling if I needed it. Um, I'm thinking though that I don't really need a lot of these. I think this is gonna just be a very simple spread. Um, and then there was a sticker sheet, I believe. Let me see, yeah. So there's word phrase stickers here. So I probably am gonna pair those with maybe some labels from my stash to add something on to a bit of the photos. I'm gonna add some white cardstock behind the vellum pieces. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think this one's gonna to come together pretty quickly, but that's good because I'm pretty busy right now. So having some quick and easy spreads is really helpful to keep, make this project manageable. Um, I do like doing the more complicated ones where I sit down for a couple hours and like sew and stamp and get and just have fun with it. But sometimes it's nice to be able to do just a simple spread and just enjoy the process and know that I can spend, you know, 30 minutes at my desk and get this put together. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys in fast forward and get this one taken care of. Okay, so this one comes together pretty easily. Like I said in the beginning, I don't always want my spread to be that complicated because I don't wanna to spend too long working on this project. I need the option to be able to spend more time when I'm really feeling it and the option to just go quickly and get a spread put together. Um, sometimes I will do multiple spreads on one day in an afternoon. Uh, this day I only did one, but right now is kind of a busier season of life. We're getting towards the holidays. I have other projects for the holidays and work is busy and just a lot going on. So I am trying to kind of take it a little bit easier in this project because I want to keep up with it. And by sharing these videos with you weekly, I tend to stay on top of it. So thank you guys for motivating me in that way. Anyways, to my spread here, I did my title card just by highlighting the dates on that month card there that were this week, which was September 23rd through 29th. And then I'm working on this journaling card here. So that photo at the top middle spot on that left-hand side are the new bookcases in our reading room. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I we've kind of slowly been working on redoing our reading room, which uh, it's going a little slower than our last redo, which was our laundry room earlier this year, just because uh, there's just a lot going on and we also need to go out shopping, but hopefully we're going to do that this weekend. So hopefully I will have some reading room updates for you soon. Anyways, I did some journaling about the progress in the reading room on that card that said this. And then on this one that says everyday moments, I'm adding some bullet point 
stories from the week. I'm looking at my Hobonichi cousin off screen because that is where I keep track of various notes of what happened during the week. And to do this journaling, I'm using my zig dot marker to create the bullet point. And then I'm using my um, Sarasa mark on 0.5 pen. This is my favorite gel pen. It's going to continue being my go-to gel pen, even though I use fountain pens now and I'm excited about my fountain pens. I don't know how often I will use them in my scrapbook layouts. And I do likely think I will use this pen the most often still, even though I love the fountain pens. With fountain pens, I uh, switch out the inks and you have to switch out the inks pretty regularly or at least clean it out. So I like to use this one because it is a consistent black. So for anything that I want consistency throughout the spread, I tend to use this one, including my project life. I think some spreads, maybe I'll use other ones, but we'll see. Anyway, so I'm just adding those various small stories here. I don't have a lot of space for journaling on this spread because like I said, not a lot happened this week. It was just some little stories. On here I mentioned um, work being super busy and how, you know, it was kind of a lot again. I have some work deadlines coming up in November and they're all kind of hitting at once, which is super frustrating and stressful, but I know I'll get through it like I have in the past and then it will slow down again, hopefully um, in the new year. So anyways, I journaled about that. I wrote about Hurricane Helene, which hit Florida and the um, southeast of the United States. So it didn't impact me directly, but it was a big news story from this week. I mentioned that we had a date night. Um, I went and got pumpkins from Walmart for the porch and I planted my tulips. I forgot to take a photo of that. And then we just had a movie night. So those are just little random little stories I'm making note of. Here I added some I pulled over some label stickers from my stash that were from Kelly Perky back when she had the Kelly Perky shop. And I use these just to add some journaling onto a few of my photos. So that one there, I wrote how I was getting my shelves temporarily organized in my craft room. I also pulled over those puffy stickers. You can see there towards, the, I just picked them up, these um, diamond stickers. They are from Studio Calico, probably from like 2015. Like they're super old and they have been in my stash for a very long time, but I'm trying to use up more of my stash. So even though I'm working with the September stories by the month, I am pulling a few pieces in from my stash. You can see I pulled in some word phrase strips in a few other colors and I pulled in those label stickers and I pulled in those puffy stickers. And to me, working with a kit is a great foundation for my page, but I like pulling in elements from my stash to personalize the spread and to use up more of my products. The Stories by the Month kits are also pretty flat. I think that's how they keep the price down. Um, most of the embellishments are flat. They have die cut pieces and then chipboard for a little bit of dimension, but they don't have, you know, puffy stickers or metal or any of those other elements. So bringing those in from my stash is really helpful to make the spread seem a little more well-rounded. For this card here, I adhered the vellum piece to some white cardstock and then I added the die cut tag. I'm using a paper piercer to punch out the hole through the entire card. And then I got a brad for my stash and I'm adding that in there again to add a little bit of dimension to the spread because like I said, the stories by the month kits are somewhat flat, which is not bad because you can get a lot in there and you can get some good prices on them and then you can pick out some dimensional embellishments from your stash to pair with it or purchase something specifically that you really love. So I have this card here, which is my title card. I typically have my title card in the top left, but I kind of messed up this week by not leaving some four by six pockets on the left-hand side when I plan to use this kit because I've been using these four by six cards all year, so I wanted to use it anyway. So I just put it on the right-hand side, it's fine. And I have the calendar on the left-hand side too. For this card here, again, I'm adhering that vellum piece to white cardstock to create my own background. And then I added this photo of my daughter and her friend. And again, I added another label sticker and I'm doing my journaling here. I wanted to make note of who this friend was because there is no way I will remember. I don't really know her. It's her roommate. I've met her only a couple of times. So it's, I, I probably wouldn't remember who this was if I didn't write it down. Summer most likely will because it is her roommate, but we'll see. 
anyways, so I do like to have like people's names when it's not someone who is in my family just in case when I'm looking back so I know who they are. Uh, I did also want to talk a little bit about how I am embellishing the spread. Like I said, I pulled a few things in from my stash, but I'm treating that as kind of like a menu of embellishment. So as I'm going through the spread, embellishing each card, I'm pulling from that same menu of embellishments. I have label stickers if I wanna add words. I have the puffy stickers. I have the word phrase strips. I have my tiny attacher, which is usually in my little embellishment recipe that I can pull from or my menu of options. And I am also pulling elements from the kit itself. On this one here, I talked about a little bit in the beginning of the video, but I had masked six square photos of the decor in my house onto this grid on a four by six card, and that was a way to get six of those photos in here. I definitely could have printed just one or two as three by fours, but I thought I liked the idea of including more photos this way. I don't always do that but that's a great way to add more photos into your spread, especially if you have photos like this that are all kind of related to the same thing. You can put them in a grid. And I really like the way that that grid looks next to the grid that says September looks like this, where I'm going to do my ephemera in a little bit. On this photo of pumpkin loafing, I'm adding some word phrase strips, just three of them cluster together, which is a way that I do like to do embellishing. And I had done it on one of the photos on the left-hand side. So I wanted to do it at least one more time on the spread to have a little bit of re repetition. Now I'm moving on to my ephemera card. I have loved these ephemera cards so much this year. I don't know yet what the Stories by the Month kits are going to look like for 2025, um, but I'm excited to include, um, hopefully they will have something similar where I can continue including ephemera or I will come up with something else. I'm not entirely sure if I wanna do this again just because I've done it this whole year, but it has been super fun. So for this one, I had a piece of wrapping paper from my boyfriend's birthday was this month. So that's the wrapping paper that I used. I got this new drawer organizer for my desk from Sysmax and that is what that packaging is for that. I had uh, some pretty bad headaches and so I have this Advil cold and sinus, which is a medication that I take an over-the-counter medication I take sometimes for my headaches. I do have some prescription ones as well, but this one is one that I rotate in because it does work sometimes. So I wanted to have that there to nod to the fact that I had a headache or had some bad headaches this month. And then I have the packaging from the cough drops because I still had my cough from my cold after I got back from Europe in August. And so I'm going to add a part of that packaging of the hulls cough drops. In August, if you watched my video using the August stories by the month, I included one of the wrappers from one of these cough drops on my grid, but I still had my cough in September, so I'm using a piece of it, of this here. I didn't want to use another cough drop wrapper because I already did that, but it was fun to make note of the fact that my cough went on forever. Not fun that I had it, but I want to document that. Finally, I'm using part of this flyer that came with my Hobonichi order. Each of the Hobonichi books came with one of these flyers, so I was happy to cut this one up because I had quite a few of them. And honestly, I think these are a little weird looking. I wasn't a huge fan and I can't read it because it's in Japanese, um, but it was you know, some ephemera that came with my planner. So of course I'm going to keep it and use it. And this is a way to document that I received my Hobonichis during September, which was kind of a big deal to me. So that was how I this card came together. In other months, I have added some stitching or something on here just to kind of add a little bit of texture and adhere them down. But this month, I'm skipping that because like I said, I wanted to keep the spread simple and honestly, it's not necessary. So that wrapped up my spread. I'm just going to trim things down and slip them into the pockets. I'm super thrilled with how this one came out. I really love these stories by the month kits for super simple spreads, and I'm excited to continue using them in 2025. I think I've mentioned it in some previous videos how Allie is switching up a lot of what she has um, 
kit wise, but her stories by the month kits are staying pretty much the same. Again, I don't know what they look like yet, but I'm expecting it will be something similar to this year. And I look forward to using those in my project life in 2025. I also mentioned, or I am mentioning in an upcoming video, I'm going to share my 2025 planner lineup. And I was going to mention in there in my craft planner that I am continuing project life like this in 2025, but I know not everyone who watches my Project Life videos watches my planning videos. So I wanted to share that with you guys here too, that I am going to be continuing Project Life in this exact same format in 2025, but I will share more about that soon. Here's a look at that completed spread. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye.